a new study just came out that debunked the long-term health benefit claims from using the Wim Hof method, which includes cold water immersion or ice baths, meditation, and breathing techniques. Now, there has been a large segment of the evidence-based community that has just been waiting for a study like this so they could pounce all over the Wim Hof method. It's been really fascinating for me as an impartial observer. I could care less whether you enjoy ice baths or are against ice baths. Um, to, to see how people are reacting to this study. Really fascinating to observe some evidence-based coaches who like immediately pounced on this and in their, their social media feed say like, data is greater than feelings. Yet they made that post with a lot of feelings and a lot of emotion. There's clearly bias on both sides of, of this debate here right now. And even more fascinating is that a lot of the evidence-based community, their biggest knock on the Wim Hof method is that it made claims that weren't really like substantiated. There wasn't a lot of research uh, supporting the claims there. They did more research was needed to back it up. Yet here we are, like one study where the authors state very clearly, like there is a lot of limitations to this one study. And the evidence-based community is like, see, we told you it's wrong, it's a hoax, it's a waste of time, and all of a sudden it's nothing but a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It's like one study with a lot of limitations, and you are like acting like basically the, the proponents of the Wim Hof method with their lack of evidence and their lack of research. So once again, you just see the bias that comes into play with research. Now for myself personally, I've never taken an ice bath, but all throughout 2022, I was taking cold showers first thing in the morning for about 15 minutes. Um, I found it was a great way to wake me up. Like it really made me very alert first thing in the morning. It did energize me it did there was something about like the, that mental toughness factor like you step you you know what you're getting into you know it's going to suck at first but then it's fascinating to see how both your mind and your body adapt over just like a few short seconds you get comfortable with it some of the benefits i also experienced were just like my skin was so much better like typically in the winter time i would have dry skin when i was taking the cold water showers every morning I didn't get dry skin throughout the winter months. So there were a lot of acute benefits that came from that cold water experience there. Now, it, it, a lot of people will say like the cold shower isn't like an ice bath and, and that's fine. Again, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of evidence on all of that. And again, like the evidence-based community is more talking about the long-term benefit claims, the health benefit claims from this. But, and they do, some of them recognize like that short-term acute benefit that we experience there. And I think if that's something, if you're going to take cold showers, you're going to jump in an ice bath, just know why you're doing it. If you're doing it because you find that it does energize you first thing in the morning, it does wake you up. You love that mental toughness challenge because it really does like, it, you show yourself like, holy smokes, I was terrified of this. There's that initial fear. It sucked immediately. And then you, you adapt, you get comfortable. It's amazing. You get comfortable from being uncomfortable kind of thing. So I think there's lots of help, uh, lots of benefits that can come from that. So if that's the reason why you're doing that, that's great. But if you're doing it because of some of the claims of the long-term health benefits, you gotta kind of take that with a grain of salt because we really don't know if it is gonna have that much of a positive impact in the long term. It might, like we might find research in, over time, like more longer studies that are done on different populations that do result in long-term health benefits. We don't know. So if you want to do it, you're willing to take the risk. I mean, I don't see any harm, any foul there. The one thing you would do want to consider is um, when you are, if you're taking a cold shower, cold bath, I, I'd recommend not eating anywhere near that time. Like give yourself at least an hour um, before a meal or something like that. It can affect the digestion of your food. Um, and I probably wouldn't do it in the evening as well. It might not have a positive impact on your sleep. I'd rather you take a hot shower at night. So when you get out of that hot shower, your body temperature will lower, which can increase your, your melatonin levels and kind of signal your body like it's time to, to go to bed there. So there's some benefits to that. So again, why you were taking ice baths, know why you're doing that. And if you enjoy it, go for it. If you want to knock it, if you don't like it, I say it, it's a thing I don't get with that. Like so many people are just so vocal about knocking people who are taking cold showers or ice baths. Like who cares? Let them do their thing. <laughs> What's, how's it affecting you if they're taking an ice bath or a cold shower? Just let them do their thing. Uh, now when it comes to the meditation, again, a lot of the evidence-based community um, will 
not necessarily knock meditation, but they don't necessarily support it all that much, especially when it comes to the long-term benefits. There's not a lot of research when it comes to long-term benefits of meditation, but they do at least acknowledge the short-term benefits of meditation, which it has been shown to decrease your heart rate, decrease your blood pressure in that moment. So again, if you're going to knock meditation because research hasn't shown that the long-term benefits are there, I mean, it's still, it's gonna have a positive impact on your day. For myself personally, I love daily meditation. I've been doing it for two years now, just about two years. And like, it's just a great way for me to take a little break throughout the day. Like, there's a lot going on. All right, just give myself five to 10 minutes, just sit in silence, ground myself in the moment, clear my mind, uh, reduce any stress that I might have. And it just helps me come back to the work that I have at hand in front of me with a, a clearer mind, with a, a better mood, with a better attitude. And um, when I do meditation in the evening, before I go to bed, it could be a little bit longer. It might be a 20 minute, 25 minute meditation before I go to bed, listening to a different, um, either some music or guided meditation on an app like the Calm app or something like that. Uh, for me, it helps, like I being an entrepreneur, family man, all that stuff. I got so much going on in my mind. One of my biggest struggles in the past was letting go of those thoughts. And that's meditation is the biggest thing. The benefit that I've experienced from it is just letting go of those thoughts. Hearing, hearing the very first meditation I ever listened to, Australian woman, I think Meg James is her name. And within the first 30 seconds, she said like, let go of your thoughts. Now is the time for sleep. And that like, that was those were that one phrase life-changing for me because even if I wake up in the middle of the night and I start thinking of ideas wherever I'm like no Scott now is the time for sleep let those thoughts go I can get to them in the morning what's most important for me right now is getting a great night sleep it's going to help it's just have so many positive health benefits there so a lot of the data like this is the kind of stuff that research might not reveal it might not show People might like the, the, the evidence based community say, Well, you're not feeling better. The, the benefits that you're experiencing are because you got a great night's sleep. Well, if the meditation helps me get a great night's sleep, isn't that a good thing as well? So, really tough to measure a lot of these things. And if you're relying solely on data and the science that's out there right now, I think you're really missing out on. The big picture, what, they, what really can go on. And a lot of people are dealing with anxiety and stress, and it's helping them manage their stress and kind of reduce their cortisol levels. Like maybe if you're dealing with anxiety and stress on a regular basis, your cortisol levels could be elevated chronically, and doing daily meditation could help relieve some of that. Uh, like it's just there's so many benefits that come along with it. Again, they can't be measured. And again, the limitation of the studies was healthy men, young men in the study. So like they probably didn't have, we were dealing with a lot of this stuff. So it's again, we got to monitor different populations and see the kind of benefit that meditation can produce. But I'm a big believer in meditation. And again, some of the evidence-based community, especially when it comes to like the breathing techniques next, they say like, it's nothing but a lot of um, spiritual mumbo jumbo. And there's, there's some of the evidence-based community will knock yoga like because the yoga practice involves the the meditation and the breathing and some of them i know some of the they're like stretching is useless so you're better off just lifting weights that's the best stretching benefit so like i can see like some have their biases already against practices like yoga and just anything that's involved in yoga with meditation and breathing are going to be kind of against that as as well but again when it comes to breathing techniques i've never done the wim hof uh, breathing techniques there, but I have done various breathing techniques, whether it's in yoga class, whether it um, is at like a, a sound bath, like a sound, the sound bowl, singing bowls um, with some breathing techniques and self-hypnosis and stuff like that. And it's for them, again, I don't know if there's science or anything backing it up, like opening up your chakras and stuff when you're doing different breathing techniques like that, um, which makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of slip into a self-hypnosis type thing. Like spiritual mumbo jumbo whatever like it improves my overall well-being it improves my day it may be acute in the moment but i think over time if i'm managing my stress better each day acutely i think that's going to have a positive impact long term um and again it may not be able to measure it directly correlate it directly to that specific specific practice but um again i i think we got to do stuff that allows us to feel good so that's where i my issue with 
data is greater than your feelings. I, I get it. Like we want to, we want to have the research, some evidence that like if evidence is strongly, like strongly against something, then you got to, you can't ignore that, but you also can't ignore your feelings as well. And you can't ignore the placebo effect. Like that's what I find a lot of times with the evidence, evidence-based community, whether something comes out that it's a study comes out that it doesn't support a claim that other people are making. Yet there's like a lot of anecdotal evidence out there. Like, well, just it's placebo effect. Well, it just, I don't know. Like it's, it's so easy to say placebo effect. And I mean, why not the same thing? Why can't it be, well, this study didn't produce positive results because a lot of the people in the study already had like a negative feeling about it. They weren't positive and, and thinking that this is actually going to work kind of thing. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just placebo effects. I think it's just a, it's a cop out in, in, in a lot of aspects. And I think it also speaks to the power of the mind. If the placebo effect can, placebo effect can have such a positive impact. It just goes to show the freaking power of our mind. So again, do we link it directly to the ice baths and the breathing and the meditation? I think if all those things strengthen your mindset, shift your mindset and allow you to feel better, all the power to you, man. That's what I say for myself personally there. Do what's going to make you feel your best and live your best life. Live your life to the fullest and really have a positive impact on your health and your overall well-being. So those are kind of my impartial thoughts on this new study, the Wim Hof Method. Um, again, I, I see both sides. Now this is, it, it does, we got some data here to cause us pause, to say, eh, maybe it's not quite what I thought it was, but I still enjoy it. I'm going to keep doing it. Or maybe, you know, I was doing it because I thought it was going to have health, all these other long-term health benefits and it's not showing that. Maybe I'd rather take warmer showers now instead or, or ditch the cold bath and always recognize that again, like this has become like a marketing machine as well. Like as soon as uh, this Wim Hof method became popular, like look at all these ice baths that are being sold out there right now. And then you go, you go to their websites and they're kind of like over hyping the claims as well. So a marketing machine that you got to be aware of, but again, that's where it all comes with research and everything else. Like you take it with a grain of salt. You're like, all right, this sounds interesting to me. It's fascinating. I see the arguments on both sides. Let me give it a try myself, see what my experience is like, because I think that's the greatest experiment that you can possibly do is the one on yourself, just having that heightened sense of awareness with how your body's responding. So that's my two cents on the topic. I would love to hear your two cents on the topic. Do you do cold water immersion? Do you do meditation? Do you practice different breathing techniques? How has that all had an impact on you or has it had no impact on you whatsoever? Would really love to hear about your experiences. So please take a moment to share them down in the comment below. If you enjoyed today's video, please do me a huge favor and smash that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. If you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, please do my favor and share it with them. And before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Lose Fat, Get Jacked. I'll include a link down below in the description as well as in the top pinned comment there. Have yourself an amazing day. I'll catch you in the next video.